Help support our coverage through Amazon Prime. Get free music with Prime Music, TV, movies, and documentaries with Prime Video, and free games with Prime Gaming. For this and a whole lot more, go to PlugHitsLive.com slash Prime. Well, we have our next guest here. Hello. Hello, how are you? Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Go ahead and introduce yourself for me. Hi, I'm Ted Carlin, uh, Marketing Director for the Chirp Ultrasonic Products uh, from TDK and Vincent's. Okay, and what does, uh, what does uh, Chirp do? So what, what Chirp has done is we, we are currently the uh, world's first and still the industry's only um, MEMS-based ultrasonic uh, presence and range-finding product. Um, if you are a hardware designer and have done uh, hardware design where you need some sort of sensor to do presence detection, range finding. Um, you may have used ultrasonic products in the past. There's other types of sensors that can accomplish this. Um, ultrasonic products uh, conventionally were very large, bulky piezoelectric transducers with lots of discrete components around them to operate them. What we've done is we've brought this into a MEMS, so it's silicon based, and we co package that with an ASIC, so it's a very miniaturized, very low power. Um, and you can operate it over different fields of view. So it gives a, a hardware designer a lot more flexibility now in the designs they can achieve with, with such a sensor. That's, that's really cool. I know, um, dating myself a little bit, going back to my Radio Shack days, uh, we sold um, an ultrasonic range finder in our parts drawers, and they were, I mean, they were big, uh, and then yeah. we also had like a, like a parking detector, right? That, uh, green, yellow, red, you know, stop, don't, you're going to hit something, uh, <laughs> instead of hanging the yeah. tennis ball in your garage. And those were also massive, um, because the sensors were big. So this would allow even something as simple as that, but, uh, obviously more interesting and more <laughs> complex, uh, systems to, to shrink down and not be dependent on on the size of that sensor yeah that's correct so what we do is you know this is now co-packaged uh with the asic in a three and a half by three and a half millimeter package so we're talking you know <laughs> you know ic level size on a pcb as opposed to these large you know transducers you've probably seen and then you need all the electronics behind it um and so that gives us some advantages in that one size is size is you know probably the major driver but also because now it's all based in silicon, it's extremely low power. Um, mm. You can now configure configure that field of view to what you want to range to and sense over. And so this opens up a variety of applications where this just wasn't possible to do always on, you know, presence sensing with ultrasound traditionally that you'd have to rely on a different type of sensor, say a PIR sensor or something like that. Right. And that's, that was what I was going to say. Um, the, the alternative would be yeah. like a PRR, which uh, most people would associate with a motion detector on a, like a security system. Uh, that's, that's pretty traditionally a, a PIR system. Uh, so, so would this give like security companies the ability to, to swap technology? Yeah. So, I mean, traditionally, like uh, a lot of these systems have used PIR sensors, um, a PIR sensor, you know, can work really well because they're low power, they've got good range. The problem with PIR sensors is you're going to get a lot of uh, false positives and you're also right. going to miss a lot of motion, right? Because they're not very good with minor motion. So when you see these occupancy detectors, say in, in conference rooms, we've all been in that conference room where the lights turn off and we're, you know, we have to wave our hands around. They're not picking mm -hmm. up that minor motion because they just don't have the sensitivity. And they also have issues in different types of lighting conditions, heating conditions. Um, and so this could be one of those replacements. Um, one of the major uh, drivers in, let's say, home IoT, as is a good example, um, they want to do more intelligence presence. They, they want to make sure they don't, they, they avoid these false, false positives. And so because we not only provide the, the ability to do presence detection, which, say, a PIR sensor can do, but we're also providing you range information. So now you can put that into your algorithm to use the range information to actually do much more intelligent type sensing 
avoid certain cases that you don't want to trigger on and also maybe just create zones in in the room where you only trigger within a certain area and then and, and eliminate a different area you don't want to range to so so it gives you a lot more variety in what you can do with these hardware designs now yeah that that makes sense i know with pir sensors one of my favorite things to do uh with like with like room light sensors is try and walk as slowly as possible to keep it from going on because like you said it's not great with with small amounts of motion so it can be fun to play a game to see if you can defeat it which if you're building if you're basing a security system on <laughs> on something that can be defeated yes by me just playing around that's not ideal yeah i mean the ultrasound you know we can range to millimeter accuracy so you know we can actually you know see that millimeter change in movement right so we can actually see you breathing perhaps you know th th that's the type of accuracy you can get with right. an ultrasonic product and and what kind yeah. of range are we t like uh what kind of distance are we talking uh about with that kind of accuracy yeah so we have uh we have two products uh that's that's on the market today we have uh, the ch101 product um that ranges up to 1.2 meters and then we have the ch201 which ranges up to five meters Okay. So that's, that's a, a pretty good distance, you know, depending on your, on your uh, goals, that's covers what a security system would for sure. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you can think about the other applications, you know, security and surveillance systems, occupancy detectors and things like that. Um, now with everything becoming smart and they want, they want these devices to now interact with users before they even mm -hmm. get to the device. And as you approach, say a smart lock, um, they want it to light up. They may want to have yeah. increased functionality on it, like fingerprint readers, uh, facial recognition. So now, mm -hmm. so now, you know, you can actually get intelligence um, from the range that and trigger certain things that turn on at different points in time. Um, mm -hmm. You know, robotics is a big market. Um, you know, avoiding, you know, say a robot in your house is a common robot is your vacuum cleaner now. Um, so you need to avoid cliffs. You need to avoid objects. Well, we can see those objects with ultrasound. Yeah, we uh we work a lot with uh, youth robotics programs and and ultrasonic rangefinders are one of the the sensors that the kids use and they are usually large. <laughs> and when you're dealing with yes. a weight limit and a size limit and stuff, you know, that would be that would be pretty great. It would give all kinds of capabilities. And I'm thinking I've also got, you know, like a I've got a smart deadbolt that before you do it, like you mm -hmm. tap the screen and but that's because, right, it's trying to to limit the amount of power that's being used for the expensive things, you know, the things that take a lot of power. Yes. This doesn't take a lot of power. You could have it come on because somebody came up to it. That's a that's a great use case. Yeah, and that's actually one of the, the major benefits of ultrasound is that ultrasound sensors are extremely low power. So they make a very good always on sensor. And then you use that sensor to wake up everything else you know, behind it. So it becomes your primary sensor, runs all the time, and then you turn on your additional sensor, say your fingerprint reader, your facial recognition, your lights, uh, things like that. It's right. extremely low power. It's very efficient, all, especially since all of which, you know, we've now all of which are more expensive. A very power. Yes, exactly. You know, the batteries yeah. you gotta add to to make these systems work and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, that that makes sense. So it it sounds like these are already um, in production and available out in the wild. Yes, so CH two hundred one and CH one hundred one are in mass production. Um, you can uh, order evaluation tools. We have a variety of uh, application notes on how to design these in. We have um, uh, algorithms uh, to use with them that are available on our website. So, and we also make miniature modules of these. So. Customers can accelerate their designs. They can now they can now put these in you know their their uh, their prototypes in in a very small form factor. So you don't just have to evaluate it on a big evaluation board. So we have a lot of tools available to the hardware designers who really accelerate their development. We have ready to go algorithms and software and all the tools you need and documentation to go with it as well. That's really fantastic for people who want to find out more uh, or access and download this stuff. How can they do that? 
So if you go to inventsense.com and then go to the ultrasonic page and it'll take you to all the products and all the documentation along with all the, the hardware tools and support to get going with your design. Fantastic. Well, you know, seeing stuff like this uh, may not uh, trigger everybody's <laughs> ideas, but the the thing that that's important here is that, you know, there we know we've got a large maker community who who watches our shows and uh, and can implement this. And uh, those maker projects sometimes turn into something uh, really cool. You know, it's the it's the basis of of the lock that I've got. Uh, you know, it came out of a <laughs> out of the maker community, turned into a, a big yeah. product. And, you know, with with your stuff, the, the user experience can get better and the battery life can as well. That seems like a win to everybody. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> we're finding new applications and use cases all the time with such a sensor because nothing like this was available before. So, you know, right. kind of new areas that it's going, ultrasounds now being considered for. That's, that's really cool. I can't wait to see all the cool places that it shows up uh, in the future. Great. Thanks so much. Uh, thanks for uh, taking the time to talk to me today. Have a great rest of your CES. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that interview. And if you did, make sure you check out some of the more than 100 interviews we conducted during the virtual CES 2021 coverage. And of course, subscribe here on YouTube, hit the notification bell to learn when we post new content and when we go live.